Welcome to a new video everyone. Today is going to be a look at Little Nightmare 2's ending and what it means. Today's video is going to be split into a few parts. First is the recap of Little Nightmares 1. It's been a couple years since its release, so for those who need a refresher, make sure to watch that part. The next section is going to be everything we do in Little Nightmares 2 up until the ending. No theory crafting, just descriptive commentary on our journey. And the last portion of the video will cover the regular ending, secret ending, and some theories as to what is going on in the universe. With all that out of the way, let's get started with the recap of Little Nightmares 1. For the Little Nightmares recap, we play as a kid named Six in the main game and someone only known as the kid in the DLC. We are inside a structure called the Maw, which is an ocean liner where the kids of the game are housed. Both of our protagonist's goals are to escape the Maw. When we first play as Six, we end up getting a strange dream of a lady wearing a mask. As Six, we make our way through the prison section of the Maw and start to become hungry. Thankfully, we are helped by someone in the cafe, but this hunger detail is quite relevant throughout the rest of the game. After the prison, we make it to the lair where we meet the janitor quite frequently. Six becomes hungry again, but luckily she finds more food, but as we discover, it was a trap placed by the janitor. Back to the kid, he also gets a strange dream, but of a hand coming from the water and grabbing him. This dream then becomes a reality as we make our way through some familiar areas into a hole that takes us into the sewage system of the maw, where we can see the creature in the water. The kid manages to escape the creature in the water, but is also caught by the janitor shortly after, and now we can see both our protagonists together. Going back to six moments Momentarily, she breaks out of her cage while the janitor drags the kid away. She navigates the lair while simultaneously avoiding the janitor until the final section where Six cuts off his arms with the door. She makes her way to the kitchen where the twin chefs are located. We can see them using the kids' ingredients in some way, as if Six is caught, she is then dumped into the pot. Kids don't seem to be the only item on the menu, however, as loads of various food groups are seen throughout the kitchen. Using the environment, Six escapes the kitchen and into the guest area. We then see the lady from Six's dream in this area taking a look from up top, which implies she holds some sort of status, and we can of course heavily assume that this is her ship. We can also see why there is tons of food in the kitchen as there's a lot of overweight guests that come in entering the mall and will eat anything they see, even going as far as chasing us down a hallway even though there's loads of food behind them. It seems to me that kids are a top quality meal. Back to the kid, he makes his escape by ripping through the meat bag he was put in and ends up in the furnace area of the mall. He befriends tons of gnomes in this area, all of whom help him escape by using the coal lift. This must have happened before Six dealt with the janitor as his arms are still on his body during the DLC. The kid makes it to the top of an elevator and a pan out shot reveals that the lady is underneath us. The kid is now in the lady's quarters and he needs to escape quickly before he's seen, which he does very well using the statue puzzle. And here we can also encounter ghost kids that will die if we shine a light at them long enough. Inside we meet the lady without her mask who is spooked by seeing us and screams. We now have to leave and escape once again, but this doesn't work as we're caught by the lady and turned into a gnome. So now we know that the gnomes are kids who got the same fate as us. We end the DLC running around in the guest area next to a couple of other gnomes. Until Six arrives, however, and it's not shown on screen in the DLC, but it is heavily implied this is the gnome that Six eats in the guest area. It's still not 100% clear why she chose the gnome and not the sausage, but some have said it could be her downward spiral into madness, as we can see a shadow version of her in the background numerous times. Regardless, Six eats the gnome and continues on. After barely escaping multiple encounters with the guest, she also ends up in the lady's quarters, but Six ends up defeating her by using her mirror against her. Six for the last time in the game becomes hungry once again, but the only thing near her is the lady. So she bites into the lady's neck and not only kills her, but gets her powers as well. With supernatural powers at her disposal, Six doesn't bother hiding anymore and walks straight through the crowd, killing everyone and ultimately escaping the maw, ending Little Nightmares 1. In Little Nightmares 2, we play as Mono. Just like in the previous entry in the series, we get a dream sequence of a long hallway with a door. On the door is a familiar eye we've seen in Little Nightmares 1 countless times. We're shot through the TV and awake in a forest. As we navigate the wilderness, we find a house in the distance. As we explore, we find a locked door that once open reveals a girl in the middle of the room. This is Six, the protagonist of the last game. She's hesitant to ask for our help, but after showing her that we only want to assist her, she joins us for the rest of the game. From the marks on the wall, it's assumed that she was here a little over a month. As we explore the house, we see taxidermied people. The person responsible for this is the hunter. He seems to have a strong interest in collecting trophies for his house, whether it's animal or human. It's unclear why he's attacking people and not just animals, but it may have something to do with the Pale City. He seems to be both aggressive but patient, as he is aggressive with his procedures but patient in his hunting. In the Little Nightmares comics, we know that Six was captured by the hunter, which explains why she ended up in his house, and maybe explains why she is still alive, as the hunter maybe didn't want to kill 
kill her just yet. The hunter most likely wanted her to die from natural causes like hunger or dehydration. If he were to shoot her, that would put holes in her body and probably fuck up his trophy collection. When the body dies of things like starvation or dehydration, the body is dead but is still intact, unlike being shot where there's holes in deformations. This can be further reinforced by the state the other victims in the house are in. Minus the faces, everything seems to be quite normal looking. After running and being backed into a corner, Six and Mono work together to pull the trigger on a nearby gun, killing the hunter. They then use a door as a raft to make their way to the Pale City. While inside the Pale City, we see clothes everywhere but no people. We also see an abundance of TVs. It's here where we discover Mono's secret power, the ability to tune into TVs. By touching the TV, he can hop into it and see what's on the other side. On that other side is the hallway from our dream, but we only get so far before Six pulls us out. We then make it to the school where our obstacles are the bullies and the teacher. We get introduced to the bullies when they ambush us and kidnap Six. The teacher is a long-necked individual who is extremely hard to outrun. The bullies seem to attack us on sight no matter what, but when no one is around, they'll just hit each other as seen by this scene in-game. When the teacher is around, however, they are very obedient and won't harm one another. By cracking open their heads with pipes and hammers, we discover that they are porcelain dolls. It's unclear why they are like this, though. Were they created by the teacher so she could be a normal teacher once again? Are these dolls manifestations of past dead kids? Who really knows? We also see one of the kids drawing eyes in chalk, which is the same eyes we see throughout both games. Near the end, we see Six get some revenge on some of the kids and strangle one to death before we even get a chance to hit it. Unlike the hunter, we don't kill the teacher, we just leave the school and escape. We make it outside once more, and we get to see Six finding her signature yellow raincoat. It's unclear if this one is a new raincoat or the same one that she had from the first game, but we'll discuss that in the theory section. For the third chapter, we enter the hospital, which has tons of mannequins. Mono once again touches the TV and is pulled out again. The hospital has some tricky puzzles and some more combat, but this time it's hands of mannequins as well as moving bodies that won't move if there's a light shining on them. After some long encounters with the mannequins, we meet the doctor, who right before meeting him on a wall has faces of what could be the residents of the city. Some of the faces also look similar to the faces of the guests in the mall from Little Nightmares 1. From various descriptions of the patient, and the doctor, we can infer that the patients were once people who came to the doctor for medical procedures. It's unclear the specific motives of each patient, as they could have been for legitimate medical reasons or perhaps more cosmetic reasons. Regardless, they came to the doctor looking for aid, and he crafted many organic and inorganic parts onto these people, with the aftermath being what we see in game. It's also quite possible that he created the kids that are in the school, as they're made entirely out of inorganic parts. We can see the doctor working tirelessly on his creations as he constantly moves back and forth between multiple patients, and it's also very clear that he cares for these patients as when we try to disconnect one of the patient's life supports, he rushes over immediately to fix them. When we try to escape, we are found by the doctor and are led on a long chase, which ends in us trapping and incinerating him. The fourth chapter is back outside once more, where we see bodies falling from buildings nearby. We discover this is from the broadcast on the TVs. All the residents are constantly watching the TV, never taking their eyes off of it, and if it goes out, they'll try anything to get it back. This broadcast is from the giant black tower in the distance, towering over the city. In some rooms later in the chapter, we can see some pictures of the thin man with some eyes around him. These exact drawings are everywhere in the hospital, and especially the school. We hop into the TV for the third time and actually open the door, only to find the thin man. Instead of the TV going out, he appears on screen this time and enters our realm, chasing us down the hallway. As we run away, we hide under the bed and Six hides under the table, except she is caught and taken by the thin man. Our new objective now is to get her back. We can see a glitched version of her in the room, which now explains the glitch kids we see throughout the game. These are kids who were captured by the thin man, just like Six was. We also get to see a glimpse of what's called the Squirming Abyss when we enter the TV again. Mono now hones in on his skills with TV travel and ends up finding a remote to help him travel through TV dimensions easier. It's here where we can see the true extent of the broadcast. The residents going as far as falling off buildings in hopes they can see the broadcast again, and when their life has drained from their body due to intensive exposure to the broadcast, they collapse and fall where they stand. The broadcast has screwed with their facial features as well, twisting their faces, making them unrecognizable, while simultaneously giving them the ability to suck us up
up the same way the Thin Man did six. We see even more residents crowding around each other doing nothing but watching the broadcast. They won't even care that we are inches from them. It's here that the residents eventually will discover us and chase us throughout the nearby stores. After hopping through another TV, we enter a room where Six is located. We attempt to pull her out, but we fail as the Thin Man pulls her right back. He finds us once again and chases us for a very long time until we can meet him again on different terms. Mono takes off his hat and uses his powers to destroy the Thin Man. His powers are strong enough to shake the nearby buildings and give him the option of teleporting large distances like the Thin Man. We then enter the giant tower, which starts Chapter 5. Right at the beginning, we uncover that the hallway we've seen in the TVs this whole time was the main entrance to the Black Tower. As Mono, we ascend the tower in hopes of finding Six, which we do by following the noises of the music box. We do end up finding the source of the music box, but also finding a huge distorted version of Six as well. To break her out of this form and for us to escape, we need to break that music box. She's extremely defensive of it and will even kill us if we get too close to her. In this room, however, though, is a suitcase, which is oddly familiar to the suitcase she has in Little Nightmares 1. After breaking it constantly, we finally break her out of her distorted form and save her. Our victory is short-lived as the Squirming Abyss chases the two of us to the end of the game. At the end of the chase, Six holds out her hand to save Mono, except she drops him into the abyss while she escapes. Mono wakes up with the only thing of note being a chair in the middle of the room. He then sits in the chair, the lights flash in and out, as we see Mono transform into the Thin Man. This sequence seems to imply that Mono was trapped here for years and not just a few seconds, as we can see him age over the course of this scene. As the camera pans out once more, the door closes to reveal the hallway we saw in the beginning. This is the end of Little Nightmares 2. So let's discuss that ending. There is a ton of possible theories about this ending and what it means, so let me try to digest this in the most easiest way possible. The first question is, when is this game taking place? In multiple interviews, the devs of the game have stated that Little Nightmares 2 is a sequel, but people are taking this in two different ways. Either this is a sequel, meaning it's the next Little Nightmares game to be developed, or it's a sequel, meaning it takes place after the events of Little Nightmares 1. I'm currently subscribed to the Little Nightmares 2 being a prequel theory thanks to this secret ending. If you collected all the glitched children in the game, you get a secret ending cutscene after the credits. In the secret ending, we see Six escape through the TV and meet her shadow version. The shadow version then motions over to a poster showing the maw from Little Nightmares 1. Afterwards, the shadow version disappears and she becomes hungry, which we all know too well thanks to the previous game. This is where the theories start to pull on in. Most of the community, and I personally agree, is that there is a time loop present in the game's world. This would explain Mono becoming the Thin Man and why he chases us throughout the game. The Thin Man knows what's going to happen at the end since he was already betrayed by Six, so he's trying to stop younger Mono who we play as during the game so the same thing doesn't happen to him. But that doesn't stop there as some have argued that Six is also present in the loop herself, not just because of the betraying of Mono but because she's motioned to go to the Maw. This ends with her becoming the lady and the owner of the Maw, thus repeating an endless cycle of Mono saving Six, Six betraying Mono, Mono becomes the Thin Man in hopes to stop future Monos from the same fate while Six enters the Maw and kills the current lady of the ship, where she then becomes the owner of the ship later in life. The reasoning behind the Lady and Six comparison is due to her never-ending hunger. We see her hunger get worse and worse, going from meat to gnome to lady throughout the game. She needs things to satisfy her never-ending hunger she was cursed with, which could explain the creation of the Maw. Now, there are some holes left unfilled in these theories, like the fact that according to the devs, Six and the Lady have no relation to one another, which completely undermines this theory. But regardless, it is an interesting take on the narrative. Other community-wide theories speculate that this game is the sequel of the last game like it was advertised to be. As some have pointed out how Six escapes, she gets that hunger strike again, and it's possible that she was saving Mono from herself so that she didn't eat him. You could say that she could possibly restrain herself from eating him, but taking into account her actions from the previous game, she really doesn't care who or what she eats. It's also possible that Six discovered that Mono was the Thin Man all along, and that's why she dropped him. Mono has been wearing the bag on his head all game, and this scene is the one time where Six can get a good look at his face. Thanks to her time in the dream world where she came out distorted, she may have seen some things like the evolution of the Thin Man and once she realized it was Mono, she betrayed him. Another likely idea is that the Squirming Abyss we see at the end of the game is the one actually pulling the strings. The Squirming Abyss seems to be some sort of higher intelligent being and possibly even a more dangerous antagonist than the Lady or the Thin Man. Regardless, if this game follows in Little Nightmares 1's footsteps, it should release some future DLC that should at least explain a 
couple of our questions. With that though, we have just about run out of time. Thank you all for joining me today as we discuss Little Nightmares 2 and its possible future. I highly encourage all theories you have to be written out in the comments so we can get a large group discussion going on the topic. As always, like the video if you enjoyed it, subscribe for more lore videos on Little Nightmares 2, future games coming soon as well, and essay style analysis videos on your favorite games. If you want a teaser to that style of content, I recommend clicking the video coming up soon. With that though, take care and goodbye. Thank you.